Hi all, uh, this video uh, from the integumentary system uh, PowerPoint is gonna be about the dermis uh, section of the skin. Uh, the dermis is this section down here that's like shown in light pink. It varies in thickness um, depending on what part of the body you're looking at. Um, certain parts of your body might have thicker dermis uh, layers than others. Um, so for example, the skin um, around your eyelids might have a totally different thickness of both the epidermis and the dermis than say uh, the skin on the palm of your hands, right? So, or, or, or the bottoms of your feet. Um, uh, there's a lot of collagen in here uh, for toughness, a lot of um, elastic fibers for elasticity. Um, you know, generally you pull up on your skin, it generally bounces right back. Um, and it also doesn't come right off. You can thank the collagen and the elastic fibers for that. Um, there are blood vessels uh, there, right? Because remember we said that the epidermis is made of um, epithelium cells. Uh, so they're avascular. They don't have blood access, but um, the derma, uh, dermal layer is made more of connective tissue. And uh, so there is blood um, that's going to uh, be significantly involved in body temperature regulation and, of course, delivery of nutrients and removal of wastes. Okay. Um, this is going to be a big deal, you know, uh, when your body temperature is high, the capillaries will um, expand. That's why a ring on your finger might feel particularly tight if um, you're warm uh, versus when you're cold, they might con your blood vessels might constrict. And... Um, and uh, a ring might feel a little bit looser uh, because um, uh, your blood vessels are constricting and, and so your fingers might get uh, slightly smaller, just as an example of that. Um, uh, there's nerve supplies here. So these uh, sort of yellow uh, lines throughout, throughout the image here are our nerve supplies. Those are gonna send signals to the central nervous system. Those are gonna be involved in our sensory capabilities of um of of our skin right uh sensing temperature sensing pressure etc uh this is a slide showing the epidermis as well as the dermis here skin appendages uh so a little bit about these we have cutaneous glands uh, which are going to be exocrine glands uh we're going to have sebaceous glands and sweat glands we'll talk about each of them separately um, hair, hair follicles, and nails. So those are going to be our skin appendages. Um, so the sebaceous or oil glands, um, these produce um, oil. And we do not have these on the palms of our hands or the soles of our feet. Um, sebum uh, is an oily fluid. It has cell fragments in it as well. It can be used as a lubricant for the skin. It can prevent brittle hair. Um, it also kills bacteria. Um, so we have these sebaceous gland ducts. These are these ducts that you can see here near the hair follicles um, that empty onto the hair follicles or even onto the skin surface. Generally, when we label, we will show them um, as emptying onto the hair follicle, as you can see here, um, to differentiate them from the sweat glands. Uh, these are also activated at puberty. Um, uh, so lots of things about the sebaceous glands there. Sweat glands, on the other hand, uh, produce sweat. You do have these on the palms of your hand, unlike the sebaceous glands. Um, they're widely distributed. Uh, you have maybe more than 2.5 million uh, per person. And they function, of course, to help dissipate excess heat, excrete waste products, etc. cetera. Um, they have acidity that can help inhibit bacteria. Um, these... Uh, glands here um, that like look like big squiggly lines and then the pore goes all the way up uh, through the epidermis. Those are gonna be the sweat glands that we uh, will label in class. Hair um, is produced by a hair follicle. So we'll talk a little bit about that in a bit. Um, the root of the hair is enclosed by the hair follicle as you can see in the image. Uh, hair consists of hard uh, keratinized epithelial cells um, uh, and there are melanocytes at the base of the hair follicles that are going to provide hair with their pigment. Um, so this is the base of a hair follicle. And as you can see, we have these cells being produced for the hair. Um, you have melanocytes here at the base that are going to provide the coloring for the hair. Um, and then of course there's a sheath for the hair follicle that will surround, uh, the growing hair. 
Um, so along with the hair, we have the hair follicle. Uh, and my video is sort of covering the bottom of it here. But the hair follicle is going to be the sheath, which is uh, both dermal and epidermal, um, because the hair goes through the dermis and out through the epidermis. Um, it's going to surround the root of the hair. Um, there's also a muscle associated here, this erector pili muscle. Um, and that will uh, be made of smooth muscle. It's going to pull the hair upright when a person is cold or frightened. So when your hair like stands on end, um, that is uh, due to that muscle attached to the hair. And then of course the sebaceous gland here um, is going to produce oil that will be um, excreted onto the hair. Nails are scale-like modifications of the epidermis. Um, of course you have these on your fingers and toes. Uh, again, heavily uh, filled with keratin. Um, the uh, stratum uh, basal extends beneath the nail bed. So one of our epidermal layers, again, we didn't really discuss that, um, but that's okay. Uh, this is gonna be responsible for the growth of the nail and they lack pigment, unlike hair um, modification, right? Um, uh, they are colorless. You see a bit of the pink color in the body of the nail uh, due to the blood supply underneath. Um, uh, but then of course, when it is um, not no longer on your finger and it grows off when it's not atta uh, attached here at the free edge of the nail, um, you notice that it is in fact colorless. And I'm pretty sure that is it for the integumentary system. Thank you for watching.